And we now talk about fitting Gaussians to data or Gaussian learning. You may be given some data points and you might worry about what is the best Gaussian fitting the data. Now to explain this, let me first tell you what parameters characterize the Gaussian. And in the one-dimensional case, it is mu and sigma square. Mu is the mean, sigma square is called the variance. So if you look at the formula of a Gaussian, it's a function over any possible input x, and it requires knowledge of mu and sigma square. And as before, I'm just restating what I said before, we get this function over here that specifies any probability for a value x given a specific mu and sigma square. So suppose you wish to fit data, and our data is one-dimensional, and it looks as follows. Just looking at this diagram makes me believe that there's a high density of data points over here and a fading density of data points over there. So maybe the most likely Gaussian will look a little bit like this, where this is mu and this is sigma. There are really easy formulas for fitting data to Gaussians. And I'll give you the result right now. The optimal or most likely mean is just the average of the data points. So there's m data points, x1 to xm. The average will look like this. Sum of all data points divided by the total number of data points. That's called the average. And once you calculate the average, the sigma square is obtained by a similar normalization in a slightly more complex sum. We sum the deviation from the mean and compute the average deviation to the square from the mean and that gives us sigma square. So intuitively speaking, the formulas are really easy. Mu is the mean or the average. Sigma square is the average quadratic deviation from the mean as shown over here. Now I want to take a second to convince ourselves this is indeed the maximum likelihood estimate of the mean in the variance. Suppose our data looks like this. There's m data points. Then the probability of those data points for any Gaussian model mu and sigma square is the product of any individual data like the odd xi. And if you plug in our Gaussian formula, you get the following. This is the normalizer multiplied m times, where the square root is now drawn into the a half over here. And here's our joint exponential where I took the product of the individual exponentials and moved it up straight in here where it becomes a sum. So the best estimates for mu and sigma squares are those that maximize this entire expression over here for a given data set x1 to xm. So we seek to maximize this over the unknown parameters mu and sigma square. And now I will apply a trick. Instead of maximizing this expression, I will maximize the logarithm of this expression. The logarithm is a monotonic function. So let's maximize instead the logarithm, where this expression over here resolves to this expression over here. The multiplication becomes a minus sign from over here. And this is the argument inside the exponent written slightly differently by pulling the 2 sigma squared to the left. So let's maximize this one instead. The maximum is attained where the first derivative is zero. If we do this for our variable mu, where we take the log f expression and compute the derivative with respect to mu, we get the following. This expression does not depend on mu at all, so it falls out. And we instead get this expression over here, which we set to zero. And now we can multiply everything by sigma square. It's still zero. And then bring the x i's to the right and the mu to the left. Sum over all e of the mu's is m mu equals sum over i x i. Hence, we proved that the mean is indeed the maximum likelihood estimate for the Gaussian. This is now easily repeated for the variance. If you compute the derivative of this expression over here, with respect to a variance, we get minus m over sigma, which happens to be the derivative 
of this expression over here. Keep in mind that the derivative of a logarithm is just as internal argument times by chain rule the derivative of the internal argument, which if you work it out becomes this expression over here. And this guy over here changes signs but becomes the following. And again, we move this guy to the left side, multiply by sigma cubed, and divide by m, so we get the following result over here. You might take a moment to verify these steps over here. I was a little bit fast, but this is relatively straightforward mathematics. And if you verify them, you'll find that the maximum likely estimate for sigma square is the average deviation of data points from the mean mu. This gives us a very nice basis to fit Gaussians to data points. So keeping these formulas in mind, here's a quick quiz in which I ask you to actually calculate the mean and variance for a data sequence. So suppose the data you observe is 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. There's 5 data points. Compute for me the mean and the variance using the maximum likelihood estimator I just gave you. So the mean is obviously 5, it's the middle value over here. If I add those things together, I get 25 and divide by 5. The average value over here is 5. The more interesting case is sigma square, and do this in the following steps. I subtract 5 from each of the data points, for which I get minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, and 2. I square those differences, which gives me 4, 1, 0, 1, 4, and now I compute the mean of those square differences. To do so, I add them all up, which is 10. 10 divided by 5 is 2, and sigma square equals 2. 